Geophysical surveys are often conducted to search for munitions impacted areas. This video will highlight the options for importing transects and anomalies into VSP for impact area discovery and spatial density analysis. You can get guidance on how to perform analysis on this type of data by watching video UA100. For details on transect designs for planning surveys for impact area discovery, see video UI100. The transects and anomaly import options are found under the menu item Sampling Goals and Analyze Spatial Anomaly Data. These are labeled Locate and Mark Impact Areas Based on Anomaly Density and Geostatistical Mapping and Delineation of Anomaly Densities. You can also access these as import options directly by selecting File, Import, and clicking the UXO link. Within both dialogues, the second tab labeled Data Entry and Plots is where the transects and anomalies can be imported. When selecting this tab, there are two sub-tabs. Make sure you are on the Data Entry sub-tab. Under the Data Entry sub-tab, there are two radio buttons. With geophysical data selected, we can see the import options discussed in this video. See video UD200 for more details on importing recon data. There are three boxes on this tab for three different elements of survey data. Course over ground transect data, anomaly data, and 100% grid areas. This video discusses specifics on the first two boxes, which are all that are needed for the more traditional analysis applications. Additional details in the third box are covered in video UD300. Each box has four buttons for working with the files that store the pertinent data. The Import button will open a file explorer and allow you to load files into that specific data type section. Within the course of a ground transect data box, you can import transect path data that is either contained in a flat ASCII file, like CSV or text files, or in a shape file. I'll first demonstrate the process of loading a text file. For text files, the file extension can be anything you want as long as they are delimited ASCII files. If you don't see your file in the Explorer window, then click on the File drop-down menu to allow you to see your file type. Once you've selected a file to load, VSP displays the Load UXO Transects dialog. This dialog displays the transect width and loading options, as well as the file contents and how the data will be translated into transects. The top part displays the current file name. Below that, you can set or change the transect width. The bottom part of the dialog previews the data contents of the file and how the columns will be mapped to the transect data. VSP tries to map the data columns, but it is not foolproof. You can change the column mapping by clicking on the header label of a column and choosing X, Y, Time, or Ignore. An X and Y column must be mapped before VSP can import the transect data. The time column is optional and is used to help determine transect breaks. The shading in the data rows shows where VSP will make breaks between transects or end one transect and start another. Blank lines always result in a transect break. Other breaks are controlled by the settings at the top of the dialog. If you check the Find Breaks box, you can set the break thresholds for the distance and time. If VSP finds a distance or a time greater than these thresholds, it will add a transect break. VSP shows the typical distance between path points to assist with your selection of a distance that would separate one transect from the next in the data. If you uncheck the box, VSP will only break transects at blank lines. When survey transects are collected, points can be recorded multiple times per second. The Simplify COG Lines on Import checkbox is used to remove many of the points from a transect that are not needed to accurately represent the path. This helps reduce the storage needed and speed up analysis processing. VSP uses the douglas poiker algorithm to remove unnecessary points. VSP will only import data into selected sample areas. If during the survey work the transects went outside the defined sample area boundaries in VSP, then these points will not be included on data import. VSP will warn you that some points were outside the sample area. Checking the mark points that are outside sample areas will create a red X on the map to show you where they are located in case you want to change your sample area boundary in VSP. 
See video EA100 for helping with modifying your sample area. Click on the Load button to import transects as they are currently formatted in the dialog. Click the Skip File to not import the transects from this file and continue to the next file if more than one was selected to import. Click the Cancel button to not import this file or any remaining files that were selected. Transex can also be imported as a shapefile, which will have the extension .shp. If you are selecting a shapefile that contains polygons, BSP will take the transect width from the polygons in the file. The Anomaly Import buttons work in a similar fashion as the Course of a Ground Transex Import button. The file explorer that opens will default to Anomaly. VSB handles any flat ASCII file or a shape file for an anomaly import. If choosing a shape file, it must contain formatted point data. If you choose a text file, VSP displays the Load UXO Anomalies dialog. The dialog shows the file name and allows you to choose the Mark Points that are outside sample areas box, as described previously. The bottom part of the dialog shows the contents of the file and allows you to map the columns by clicking on the column headers. They can be mapped to X, Y, Value, or Ignore. An X and Y column have to be mapped before VSP will allow you to load the data. The Value column, if available, can be mapped to support additional analysis functions on the anomaly amplitudes. Click the Load button to complete the loading process. Once imported, the Num column in the Anomaly box shows the number of anomaly points that were loaded from the file. Anomalies for use with 100% grid areas can also be imported here. We recommend that they be imported in a separate file from the transect anomalies to facilitate easier analysis in later stages. Sometimes the user will not have their sample area selected when they try to import the data. When this happens, VSP will provide the warning that all your points were outside your sample area. Look back at your map and make sure your sample area is selected. If you have chosen to mark points that are outside the sample areas, you can use those markers on the map to change an existing sample area or create a new one. With your transect and anomaly data into VSP, you can now start to build density maps and find high density areas. See video UI100 Impact Area Discovery Overview for the next step.